All right, let's go meet down at the pizza parlor and let's go dive headfirst in some good old fashioned Chicago style pizza. I'm talking about cheat meals and I'm talking about that hormone leptin that's gonna help you get the most out of your diet by eating junk, kind of. Today I'm talking about a fantastic hormone that exists in your body known as leptin. Now, we've done videos on leptin before, but I'm about to go deep with some science so that you truly understand what you need to do with your cheat meal, but I also wanna break down how leptin works when you're in an intermittent fasting state and how it can be a huge benefit to you. Basically, what we have to break down is what leptin is. Leptin is a simple signaling hormone that communicates with the pituitary and the hypothalamus. That's all it is. But what it does is it communicates from the fat cell to the brain. And its job is to tell the brain if there is enough fat on hand or not. So basically what we're looking at is something like, okay, the fat cell tells the brain, hey brain, I have enough fat on hand. You're cool to go ahead and start burning as much fat as you possibly want. We're totally good, we have enough. Hang up the phone, get to it, all right? On the other side of the equation is when there's not enough leptin, then the brain doesn't receive the signal. So the brain ends up saying, uh-oh, there must not be enough fat or calories on hand, so we're gonna start storing it. We're gonna start holding on to it, making it so the body reserves everything. We don't want that. Now you can do the math. When you start dieting for extended periods of time, of course, even if your body fat levels aren't that low, you're gonna slowly stop signaling leptin, and that's gonna make it so that your brain thinks, even though you're eating this many calories, then your body is going to start looking at it in a very different way and it's going to start reserving what it can and encouraging you to eat. Okay. Then there's another scenario. Let's say you have a high amount of body fat. Okay. That high amount of body fat means that you have a high amount of leptin, always telling the brain to try to burn fat. Okay. But what ends up happening is eventually there's so much leptin floating around that the brain can't even find it anymore. It's like it just ignores it. Uh, the way that I've described it before is leptin is like a nagging spouse, okay? Nagging girlfriend, nagging wife, nagging husband, whatever. And it's just always beaten down on the hypothalamus saying, hey, hey, I'm here, do this, do that. Eventually, the hypothalamus in the brain just says, forget it, I'm done. Hangs up the phone, ignores. So that is called leptin resistance. That's when the body is producing so much leptin that even though it has leptin present, the body ignores it and you still add more fat and eat more and get more leptin and get more fat and eat more and it just puts you down this vicious circle that you can't get out of. Now how do you break that pattern? How do you break the pattern and get the signaling back? Well that's where cheat meals come in. But there is a fine line between a cheat meal that's effective and a cheat meal that's going to completely sabotage you. What we have to look at is how the body responds to certain foods. You see, leptin responds very well to glucose, but fat actually kills the leptin response. It slows it down. It kind of muddies the communication. So when we have our cheat meals and we want to spike leptin, we actually need to step away from the fats for a minute, temporarily, even though I'm a huge advocate of fats. We want to spike up the carbohydrates so we get that leptin signaling where it needs to go, triggering the brain to actually start burning fat again. That's the whole idea. Okay, now let's look at intermittent fasting for a minute. A lot of people end up thinking that they're gonna lose a bunch of size when they intermittent fast, so they're gonna not get the goals that they really are after. But in reality, it's like having a cheat meal every single day. You see, you're depriving yourself for a little bit, then you break your fast, and when you eat, you signal leptin because the body's been starving, now all of a sudden you have a leptin spike when you do eat. That doesn't mean you necessarily need to eat a bunch of carbs, like I said previously, but you do have that micro scale thing happening on a daily basis. You have that micro leptin spike that's allowing you to continually burn more fat. So at the end of this all, I want you to not be afraid to have a cheat meal every 14 days or so, but do one thing. Don't let yourself get in an emotional habit of having a cheat meal, okay? Let it be random. Listen to your body. If you need a cheat meal after 10 days, go for it. If you need one after 21 days, go for it. But don't get yourself in a pattern. All you're doing is creating an emotional response to food that the second you're under stress is going to become your default. And then you're going to go right back to old habits. So that's a little science on how leptin, the phone call between your fat and your brain, truly works. If you like these videos and you like more science-based topics, make sure you comment what you want to hear about. But also, if you have questions for myself, Johnny, and the rest of the Six Pack Abs team, 
make sure that you post them below so that we can answer them either in a video or in a reply. And as always, make sure you're heading on over to sixpackabs.com so you can see all the video content, from not only all the contributors here at Six Pack Abs, but ones that we curate, that we have tried and tested and feel are the best. I will see you soon.